Hello class, today we're outside the high school. What we're doing is we're trying to understand the scale model of the solar system because the numbers are really big and our brains have trouble with really big numbers. So you should have filled out this paper already. You should have all of columns two, four, and five, and six completely done. And we're gonna use that data to uh, walk out our solar system. So the first thing that we notice is that the scale model of our sun is 280 millimeters. So this is how big our sun looks on the scale model. It's right here, okay, it's obviously the sun. What we're going to do is travel to our very first planet, which is Mercury. Mercury is um, 11.6 meters from the uh, sun itself. I've measured these distances using this trundle wheel. It spins around and measures meters as I walk along. And so we're gonna head to Mercury, here we go. Here we've arrived at Mercury. A couple of things you need to know. Here's Mercury. What do you notice about it? It's really tiny. It's also the closest planet to the sun. Therefore, it's going to be hot. As a matter of fact, it's 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And it takes the least amount of time to orbit because it's the closest planet to the sun. We're gonna to move to our next planet, which is Venus. Here we go. If you look at the scale model, size of Venus and the size of Earth, 2.4, 2.6 uh, millimeters, you see they're relatively the same size. So Venus is actually referred to as Earth's sister planet. And uh, it has relatively the same gravity, same mass uh, a a as the Earth. However, it's the second planet from the Sun, so you would expect that it would not be as hot as Mercury, but it's 900 degrees Fahrenheit because it has a carbon dioxide atmosphere that's very thick. By the way, you should be filling out some notes in the notes section here about things I'm saying about the planets. Moving on, our next planet is the Earth. Okay, what's unique about the Earth? It's the only planet that has life and it's the only planet that has water in all three forms. That's what's cool about the Earth. Okay, we're gonna head to our next planet, which is Mars. Very interesting thing. Um, Venus is only 8.4 meters that way. Mars is 15.6 this way, twice as far. But we've sent over 40 spacecraft to Mars and very, very few to Venus. Wonder why that is. Here we are at Mars. Also kind of a small planet. What you need to know about Mars is it's called the red planet. The reason why we sent so many spacecraft there is we found signs of water existing in the past and possibly currently. And where we find water, we also find life. So that's very important. Where we're at here is the very last inner planet. So we can take a look back at the sun way back there. We can put our thumb up like this and look at how big our thumbnail is compared to the sun. My thumbnail can pretty much cover the whole stop sign. That just gives us a frame of reference. This is the last inner planet. These planets are relatively close to each other, relatively close to the sun. I can actually still see two of the three planets from here, although they're really, really small. We're gonna take uh, a trip to our first outer planet, which is Jupiter. It's 110.2 meters from here. Is there anything between here and Jupiter? Yes, there is. It's the asteroid belt. And when astronomers were designing their first spacecraft to travel through the asteroid belt and go to the outer planets, they were very worried that um, the asteroids would smash into their spacecraft and destroy the spacecraft. But what we found out was that the average distance between asteroids and the asteroid belt is actually 10 million kilometers, which is roughly about 6 million miles between asteroids. So there's really no problem uh, in sending a spacecraft through there. Plus, most of the asteroids orbit in a disk, so if we send our spacecraft above or below that disk, no problem there. We've almost made it out to our first outer planet, which is Jupiter. If you look at Jupiter, you can see one thing very interesting about its scale model size. And what is that? Well, if you took every other planet and every other moon in the solar system and added them together 
times two, that would equal Jupiter. So here's Jupiter in our scale model. Looks pretty big compared to the other ones. The other ones were just little specks. Now, speaking of spec, take a look back at the sun and compare your thumbnail in size to the sun. Whoa, not even close. The sun's really tiny from out here. Can't see any of the inner planets. So now you can see why it's called an outer planet. Our next outer planet is actually Saturn. We're not gonna travel there because it's pretty far from where I'm at here. Saturn is roughly where the flagpole is way over there. Um, that's something like uh, 200 uh, clicks from here, or 159, no, 129 clicks from here. That's to Saturn. Jupiter has a magnetic field that's so large that sometimes Saturn is actually in it, which is crazy. And because Jupiter is so big, um, it has a large gravitational pull. It has 79 moons. Beyond that, about 300 clicks beyond that is the next planet. Beyond that, about 300 clicks beyond that is Neptune. And beyond that, about a thousand meters from here, a kilometer from here on our scale, is Pluto. So you can see why it took nine years for us to get a spacecraft from Earth to Pluto. Pretty wild. Make sure that you have notes written down on there, you have all the math done, and you're going to turn that in. Good work, class.